Hey there everyone, here's a quick walkthrough of how I made this Unreal Engine ambient visualizer using Ableton Live 12 and Unreal Engine 5.4. So some prerequisites to get started. The first being some blueprints from the Sem and Tris AV Club. They also have some great tutorials that'll help you get up and running if you happen to be interested in this sort of thing. The next being Ultra Dynamic Sky for all my environmental lighting purposes. Brushify for both building out the landscape and for texturing it, Quixel assets for things such as pre-animated trees, and a plugin for Ableton Live called OSC PAR, which basically allows you to take automation data and convert that into OSC data, which can then be routed using your host IP and port address. So when it comes to Brushify, setting up the landscape is pretty easy. All you have to do is go to the Landscape tab, Select your appropriate Brushify material. In this case, I'm gonna do it two kilometer by two kilometer landscape. So we'll select this material, hit create. Then we'll come over to the paint tab, scroll down, and then you have your list of different materials to choose from. For this case, we'll choose the grass material. And then just like that, I have a nicely textured landscape. You even have the foliage aspects included, which is a nice little touch. Then when it comes to making the mountains, all we have to do is come back over to the Sculpt tab, come over to Blueprint, go to Blueprint Brush, and then pick one of the many Brushify presets that are in the Smart Pack. For this particular case, I'll choose the mountain, click there, and just like that, the Sculpting Brush is then applied to the landscape can then come over to the panel on the right hand side and say adjust the height, go in and customize whatever you really need for your particular mountain. And one last aspect that I use for building out the landscapes are these distant meshes that also come with Brushify. So if I say come to the generic mountain again, drop that in the scene, it then gives me just a relatively low poly version. If I make this say 20 times larger, and then put it all the way back here, I can quickly just start building out a background that we won't necessarily ever travel to, but just kind of helps fill out the landscape at the end of the day. When it comes to lighting the environment, I use this add-on from the Epic Marketplace called Ultra Dynamic Sky, and it's this great blueprint that you just drop in your scene and then kind of control whatever parameters you really need to. This blueprint gives you access to controlling the time of day, cloud coverage, fog, intensity of the fog, adding the aurora lights, stars, rotation of the sun and moon, altering the time of day, and so on and so forth. It's a really great comprehensive tool that helps quickly dial in lighting for a scene so I can spend more time focusing on things like the composition of the shots, the effects being used throughout the piece, along with camera movements and everything else that goes into making a video. So on top of using Ultra Dynamic Sky for dialing and the lighting of the environment, I also went in and modified the blueprint so I can then hook it up with the OSC data being generated in Ableton here using this other plugin called OSC PAR. So once you have the host IP and port address set and the appropriate blueprint set up, which I can go into more detail in a later video, I can then in Ableton draw out all sorts of automation data and then assign a custom range to work within. So for macro 10 here, that's what I'm using in Unreal to control the time of day. So over the course of the entire Ableton session, I can gradually modulate any parameter I want, which ideally helps give the visualizer or whatever Unreal project you're working on a bit more dynamic and life to it, especially when you can map one of these parameters in OSC PAR to a MIDI controller and then live on the fly, change the amount of cloud coverage, what the time of day is, etc. So far I've been finding Ultra Dynamic Sky to be the easiest to use and most versatile while also being very efficient in terms of performance on your computer. And then the final major variable for the visualizer would be the little twinkles that synchronize to all the little sine wave plucks that come from a generative sequencer in Ableton. 
So to get that all set up, you basically start with this Max for Live device that comes from the Sementris AV Club. This basically allows you to convert whatever MIDI data you have in Ableton into OSC data, which can then be funneled into Unreal Engine, which can then, from there, be hooked up via blueprints and then used to control whatever variable you want. So in this particular use case, I have the MIDI data just triggering a Niagara and Cascade effect. So to show how that's set up, I've got this box here, and inside my blueprint, we basically have the nodes that take in the OSC data, which then trigger a timeline, which is just a quick little blip of an envelope, which just basically tells the Niagara effect to spawn. And then from there, we use a spawn emitter at location node, which is connected to a bounding box. The really handy part is once you add a random point and bounding box node into the location, every time you send off a trigger to the timeline, it will randomize the location of said particle. Then once you add a for loop node in there and then allow a spawn amount to be editable, you can then also enter in a variable which allows you to control as many little sparkles as possible. So basically once you get all that set up and then hooked up into Ableton, whether it be through a generative sequencer or a pre-programmed bit, you could say come in and hit play. Every time a sine wave is triggered, we get a randomly placed Niagara effect. So yeah, that's basically all there is to it. I can do a more in-depth walkthrough at another time in regards to building that out from scratch if anyone would happen to be interested. That basically concludes how I set up my ambient visualizer. If anyone happens to have any further questions, please feel free to leave a comment and consider subscribing. Thanks.